All right, so today we're going to go deep. Heads up, I'm on a 100% water diet for the next maybe three weeks. I'll be on water only. Only water. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm on. All right, so today we're just going to go deep. We're going to go deep in fears. Um, All right, so um, fears. Uh, success and fear go hand in hand. Hold on, actually, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start my YouTube live too. Cause... Yeah, Let me see. Um, let me set this up. I'm most definitely gonna go live from YouTube. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to both uh shout out to both y'all. So we pretty much live from two different platforms at the moment. But um uh, just a few things that I wanna chop it up about. Um first and most foremost, uh make sure I get that big nigga easy. Um uh Fears. This is something that I want to talk about. Fears. Um, fear and success go hand in hand. A lot of people understand this. Fear and success goes hand to hand. 99% of unsuccessful people are battling fear. That's it. It's just fear. Battling fear. And fear comes in multiple ways. Um, success can be fearful for some people. Some people are afraid of, uh, what do you call it? Um, some people are afraid of the bright lights. Some people are afraid of the bright lights. Some people are, they've gotten so comfortable with them lower selves or with thy lower self that they lower self have become a symbiote. Hold on real quick. I got y'all. All right, sorry about that, y'all. You know, I want to make sure we we up from both platforms. Um, make sure we get all these people in there. All right, so going back to what I was saying earlier, um, we had like you know technical hiccups. But this is going back to what I was saying earlier. Um, fear. So, fear and success goes hand in hand, and 
nine times out of 10, most of the time people are not successful is based on fear. Um, and, uh, fear comes in multiple different ways. Some people are afraid of success or are afraid to take the step. Some people are afraid to jump. And for the people who are afraid to jump, they are afraid to jump because they are victims of a symbiote, a parasite. And that parasite is their lower self. So they have dwelled in their lower vibration so long that their lower vibration have become a voice. And that voice inside their head have become a parasite. And it tells them to be comfortable. And I, it's crazy, I used to say comfortable, but comfortable in their lower lifestyle. It's almost like saying, it's okay. Like we're okay with this poison. We could dwell in this poison. Please don't get out of this poison. So what happens is that fear is not really a fear. It's an actual living organism inside of you that tricks your brain into not succeeding so that that symbiote could stay alive. And a lot of people are dealing with that. A lot of people, there's thousands of people who are dealing with afraid to jump because that parasite inside of them goes, don't do it. They are not gonna like this. They are not gonna do this. This is not gonna happen. This is not gonna work. Well, what if this, what if that? You just keep on tricking your brain into not jumping because if you ever get happy, that person don't exist no more. There's no, there's no world in the future for that symbiote or that parasite to exist. So that parasite not going, it's going to trick you out of being a better you so they can survive. And a lot of people are dealing with that. There's a, a millions of people dealing with that fear. There's other forms of fear is, you know, um, uh, and I know a lot of people are going through this. Um, this might be a super touchy subject. And even the fact that it is a touchy subject is why a lot of people are victims of certain things that has happened in their life. And they know the bigger they get, certain things might come out that they don't want to come out. That could be another reason that people are afraid. Um, Another reason that people are afraid, can be afraid is some people may just want a parent to clap for them. Some people may just want, you know, fuck a coach, fuck a, you know, a trainer. Some people just want their parents to clap for them. You know how easy it is to ride a bike if your parents are behind you holding it like you could do it, boy. So it's, it's a lot of reasons that people fear certain things. It's a lot of reasons, you know, your environment, your neighborhood, your, your DNA makeup, you know, it's just a lot of reasons you fear, but fear and unsuccess go hand in hand. I say this because I used to be a person that was afraid to take the big step, even though I knew I had all the tools to do it. I used to be afraid. I used to be that me and I can only speak from my own personal experience. I used to be afraid to take that step because. Well, let me take this. Let me let me step back a little bit. My situation may be different from everyone that I know of. One of the reasons why I used to be afraid to take the step is based on the simple fact I knew that if I stepped up certain people couldn't step up. So my fear was just leaving people behind. So I've always lowered my standards in life just to make people tag along. I had fear of leaving people. Why I was family deprived coming up. And yes, I had family, you know, I have brothers, sisters, uh, mom, you know, I had a step pop. My mom and my dad separated. I had step pops. But when I say family, like, uh, 
I don't give a fuck. And I never gave a fuck about the American standard of family. I never thought that we should all sleep in separate rooms. I thought we should all sleep in one room. I never thought we should go to different places. I thought we should all stay in the family. Like I had this tribal type mind state my whole life that I lived by. And I was deprived of that based on American standards of what we perceive family is supposed to function as. And I hated it coming up. I hated it. I wanted us to be in the wild. I wanted us to be just building shit together. Like I wanted us to do all type of shit together as family. And we just didn't do that. So I was family deprived. So I spent a lot of my life trying to create that with many circles of people. My whole life, I've tried to create it multiple times. Like I've spent my life trying to create it. Uh, I've had groups of homies. I've had groups of friends. I've had circles where I've tried to build these maximum empires with. And throughout my life, I've learned that, you know, everybody don't see things the way you see things. And everybody got different fear palettes. Some people are afraid of this. Some people are afraid of that. My thing was, I just was always afraid of leaving people behind. That's always been my biggest fear, just to leave people behind. And to this day, it's still hard for me. This is a lot of shit that I shouldn't even care about in the situation that I'm in right now. And I still care about it every day. I, damn, man, I got to find a way to help these niggas. I know they lost. I got to find a way to help these niggas. Like me even doing this right now. Me even doing this, talking to y'all motherfuckers about this shit, is me telling myself, I can't let you niggas just stay behind. So, fear, right? Fear, how to obtain it and how to fight it. In order for you to move forward so that you can be successful in whatever it is you're doing, there's a few things that you need to come to the final conclusion with inside your mind. And that thing is, you ain't going to make everybody happy. Never. You ain't going to never make everybody happy. Never. No matter what you do, you ain't going to be perfect. One of the reasons why you ain't going to be perfect, because everybody don't see the same thing. Everybody DNA ain't the same. Every The way people maneuver in life, just not the same. Some people like mustard on a hot dog. Some people hate mustard. Some people like relish. Some people hate relish. Some people hate hot dogs. Some people eat their hot dog on the outside of the bun. Like they put the bun in the middle and put the hot dog around the bun. Everybody ain't maneuvering the same. And for so in that scenario, you ain't going to never please everybody ever, ever in life. And I think that is one of the problems that we have as a people. We have this thought in our mind that we got to please everybody. We don't want no backlash. We don't want we don't want no. No, not, you just wake up every day like, man, I better see 1,000 good comments on whatever I do. If I do something, I better see 1,000 comments. If I see, you know what's crazy? I didn't see people take down their hard-earned work because one comment said it was trash. I didn't have homies call me like, yo, you see this nigga talking shit under my comment? Like, who this nigga think he is? Like, I'm like, bro, that shit got 4,000 comments of good replies and two niggas on here talking shit. So out of all 4,000 comments, you scroll down to the two niggas talking shit and no niggas made you take your video down. How many niggas going through that? Be honest, don't, don't lie. How many of y'all do that? I do it to this day. I'm about to do it right now. Which one of you niggas talking shit? I'm about to block you bitch ass. How, how many of y'all do that? Keep it real. How many niggas ignore all the good comments and go right to the negative one? Should be fucking up your whole day. Everybody do that shit. You got 10, 10, 10, 15 dope comments. You got one negative comment. That shit and fucked up your whole day. So 
that's just something you got to come to conclusion. You got to come to that final conclusion inside your own life. You ain't going to make everybody happy, no matter what you do. The moment you could take that step and understanding that in your mind is the moment you could progress. You could progress beyond imaginable once you realize you ain't going to make everybody happy. After you realize you ain't going to make everybody happy, then you start walking with this, this chip on your shoulder. Like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want because I understand that some people ain't going to be happy no matter, no matter what I do. I'm going to tell you all another thing I did before, right? So I wanted to test the world. So when I got like a big, a big, like a, I got a big payday like a couple of years ago, like a big, big payday for some stuff I did. I got a super big payday. So I don't know if y'all remember, I used to post, hey, drop your cash ass below. I'm giving out blessings. I used to post that. Bro, I gave away a million dollars. But I gave it in ones. So I cash at mad people, one dollar. I gave away a million dollars total. So I sent everybody one dollar. You know how many niggas called me broke? Broke ass nigga only sent the nigga a dollar. You a bum. You a bum. You only sent me a dollar. Nigga can't send 20, 30, damn, one dollar. Bum ass nigga. I knew you was broke. You ain't going to please everybody, dog. You ain't going to please everybody. People brains ain't taken into consideration. I wonder how many dollars he then gave to people. No, it ain't ungrateful. It's just a simple fact. You can't make everybody happy, man. You could give somebody $999,000. You know what they gonna say? Nigga ain't give me a million, broke ass nigga. I'm just saying, it's just the way the world works. You ain't gonna make everybody happy, ever. You're not gonna make everybody happy no matter what you do in life. Don't try. Stop trying. Another thing that promotes fear and prompts fear inside the brain, inside the heart, inside the mentality is living vicariously through other people. A lot of people don't live for themselves and they don't live through their own like their own heart, their own spirit. A lot of people like I want to live like this person. I, I watch this person. I'm into how this person acts. I'm a I'm gonna be like this person. And they create these fictitious characters inside their mind. And that character overpowers the real them. And then the real them be in the corner somewhere crying like a little bitch. Oh, I wish I could I wish I can be myself. And then internally you become fearful. And then fear, that type of fear creates over aggressiveness so when i look at all gang members all of them every single gang member on earth all of them scary everyone all the real niggas everybody everybody afraid niggas that's outside 10 toes down niggas afraid and by you being afraid, you overcompensate that. I mean, you you over, you you turn your other thing and overhaul to protect the inner you that ain't really like that. It's just life. How do I know this? I seen it happen firsthand with my big brother. My big brother name is Nutso. My big brother a lunatic, blatant lunatic. Why is he a lunatic? Because he's soft. This is my big brother. I grew up watching him. I watched him cry. I watched him cry in my mama's arms. I watched him cry and cry and cry every day. Cry. 
I, I remember when we first got quartered on. I remember everything. Overcompensation because the inner you is really soft. I watched it my whole life. That's everybody. That's majority of specifically men in the world. We marks. A lot of us is marks. But we overcompensate our aggressiveness to hide our inner mark. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but, you know, it is what it is. But we all mark back out when the police come. I'm just saying. You know, all the killers and all the steppers and all the ten toes down niggas. You'll see they real self when the police pull up. I'm, I'm just saying. I ain't putting a figure in nobody. I'm just saying. When, when we in the back seat of the car in handcuffs, you see a nigga true colors. Hey, tell my mama, tell my mama, I love her. <sighs> my mom, nigga, I'm about to go in here and kick my head in. So I'm just saying, fear. Fear creates multiple things in life. But I do know this. Fear is the number one reason people are unsuccessful.